Hi, I'm Dick DeRay uh, with Fox and Winery. Uh, we're here today with my wife, Jenny, uh, to do our second uh, virtual dinner with Chris here at uh, the Wine Vault Bistro in San Diego. Uh, I was one of the founders of Foxen some 35 years ago with my partner, Bill Wathen. Uh, we were a couple of guys that uh, wanted to make vineyard designated wine, small quantities, and uh, it was our hope to uh, do that, which we've done for 35 years now. We named the winery after my great-great-grandfather, William Benjamin Foxen, who was an English sea captain who was one of the first settlers in northern Santa Barbara County. So this far this year, our grapes are looking good on the vineyard. Uh, we've started to bring in fruit. We brought in a small amount of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay so far. Uh, it's been a great year in that uh, we've had a cooler summer, so our growing time has been longer. The longer the hang time, the more flavor in the, in the vine. So anyway, uh, we're here tonight to taste three wines that you're having with your food. Uh, and uh, I just see our dog Tembo came in the house looking for food. Anyway, Jenny, it's good heaven is here tonight and it's great to be back with Chris. Although right now, while I'm thinking about it, before I forget, I, Chris requests every year that perhaps I tell a joke, a semi off color joke. Uh, and uh, so far it's gone pretty good. I, I try to remember these jokes all year long and come up with a good one. But anyway, Billy and I, you know, are approaching that older age where we're actually starting to think about retirement. And uh, so this talk could have probably been between Billy and me, but these two older gentlemen who are getting up in age decide that they really should talk about their mortality and, and what life might be after they die. And they make this agreement that the, whichever one of them dies first, the other one will come back Oh, he'll come back and tell the other one exactly what the afterlife is all about. So as a result, about three months later, one of them dies. And the other one, he waits. And about two weeks later, he hears this voice that says, I'm back. I'm back to tell you about the afterlife, and I'm very excited. And he goes, oh, please tell me. And he says, well, I get up in the morning, and I have sex. And he says, you know, before lunch, I'll have sex again. And then maybe after dinner, sex again. And his friend goes, oh my God, I had no idea that heaven would be such a place. And he goes, heaven, heaven, I'm not talking about heaven. I'm a jackrabbit in East Texas. So anyway, <laughs> usually I get laughs off of that, but because virtually I only get it from my wife. But anyway, there's your joke, Chris. <laughs> Dix tells that um, uh, a lot, and it's always funny. And I think the older we get, the funnier it, it gets. Um, so I want to thank uh, Mary and Chris Gluck for inviting us once again. And as Dick mentioned, this is our second virtual dinner. Hopefully next year we'll be able to do one eventually in person because we miss you all. Um, so uh, once again, um, Chris and Chef have put together a great looking menu. So I'm gonna kind of go over that and talk about the wines and try to ask Dick the questions that I think that you might uh, be wondering about. So, uh, so for tonight's dinner uh, with our uh, 2018 Block UU Chardonnay, um, which hopefully you uh, have seen the, uh, the video or the video will come right after this. Um, uh, we've got um, paired with that a sea seafood bruschetta, which sounds delicious, and grilled summer squash with tabui and yogurt and uh, papitas, which sounds really yummy. And Dick and I have in our, our glass our, the wine right here. It's my third glass. <laughs> so this is 2018. <laughs> so uh, 2018 was very similar to 2017. We had nice rain. Uh, remember that when we used to get rain? Uh, we had rain in the winter when it was supposed to be. And uh, then a nice uh, kind of an uneventful uh, growing season. 
Um, and uh, Dick, what do, you, what do you think? I think it's been beautiful, especially uh, the Chardonnay we're starting to uh, harvest now. What we're seeing is we're seeing a crop that uh, is probably a little smaller than normal, but the grape size and grape bunch size are just phenomenal, meaning they're very small. So we're gonna have, with the hang time and everything, I think an amazing Chardonnay crop this year. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and as I was saying, this is what you have um, here for the dinner is our 2018, which is really showing beautifully. Um, as you know, if you know Fox and Wines, uh, we love our acidity, and this has got it in spades. We work really hard to keep the acidity. We, we never uh, inoculate for secondary, uh, so we really like to have a balanced wine, classic uh, classically styled wine with lots of minerality, nice mouthfeel. Um, and I should mention, because this, the 2018s were so highly acclaimed, I have to, I have to brag here. Um, so this particular bottling got a 93 from Jeb Dunnick, 93 from Wine Enthusiasts, 93 from Venice, very consistent. Um, and so, it, and overall, the 2018s, this is really um, a wine that is, is great drinking now, but it's also great uh, to, if you can age it. So my advice is to, to buy more, buy up to a case from um, Wine Vault and Bistro and hey, puts, put, it, put it in the cellar. Now, hey, 93 is an A in Catholic school. <laughs> so, um, the next one. Yeah, so, so the next wine um, we're going to talk about, and I should have, Dick, while you, this, while you talk about the Pinot, I'm going to run and get a dump bucket. Okay. So we've got the 2017 Santa Maria Valley, which is just all, one of my all-time favorites. This is, this is a wine we've been making for 35 years. It's been uh, pretty much the workhorse of our Fox and Portfolio. And this particular wine uh, is usually a blend of two of our favorite Pinot Noir vineyards, uh, River Bench and Block 8 Biennecito. Uh, what it has in common is that it's almost entirely Pomard clone. And Pomard clone, those of you that know your wine tasting, know it's the most soft and supple and velvety. Uh, of all the Pinot Noirs, and, and usually at a younger age than most of the other uh, clones of Pinot Noir. But anyway, uh, this particular wine is at its, I think, apex. It's, it's just tasting superb. Uh, it's just, it's, it's Cherry Garcia, as my partner calls it. Yeah, so this wine yeah, spends just a year in barrel, um, no new oak. It's really meant to showcase the bright red fruit. Uh, Billy likes to say bright uh, summer red fruit and, and spice of the Santa Maria Valley. Um, and this is gonna be paired with roasted chicken breast, mushroom and leeks, which sounds divine. Um, and you know, this, that's the kind of um, pairing that could go from Chardonnay to, to the Pinot Noir because of its freshness. In addition, then you're going to uh, move into the herb-crusted um, peppercorn pork, uh, pork loin, I believe, um, which should be, that's just a classic pork. Oh, pork is, the, is one of my favorite combos with this Pinot. It kind of brings out its earthiness, hence the mushrooms <coughs> of the uh, mushrooms and leeks of the roasted uh, uh, chicken, as well as the as the peppercorns uh, and herbs with the with the pork. Um, and this wine, and I should add, just as a little bit of housekeeping, this wine will probably be this vintage. We will be out of probably by the holiday. So again, if you're inclined to, um, if you like this and you like the pairings tonight, to definitely get uh, a little bit of extra because to carry you into the holidays because it's also one of my favorite uh, uh, turkey uh, pairings. Excellent. Right. Showing so, well. So in, enjoy. Salud.
And I should mention that we, we don't fine or filter any of our red wine. So really what you're getting are the aromatics um, and the beautiful delicacy that really is, uh, I think this, I don't think there's any other wine that we make that underscores the Santa Maria uh, Bench Pinot Noir. Agree, I agree so totally. Cheer cheers. All right, so we're going on here now. We got our, our third yeah. course. All right. God, how do you do this, Chris, every week? It's unbelievable. <laughs> <coughs> okay, um, and now we're going to go to our 2017 Cabernet. 100% Cabernet from the Vogelzang Vineyard, uh, which I'm really excited excited about because this is the most limited of, of the wines that you have tonight. Um, and I should also note that there are only 30 cases left in the whole world. Um, so this is, again, this is the, our, from our 7200 label the Cabernet from Vogelsang Vineyard in Happy Canyon, which as Dick and I sit where our house is, it's about three miles east and about three degrees warmer uh, than the center of uh, San Inez Valley. The Happy Canyon is, is a relatively new appellation, probably only 10, 12 years old. And Vogelsang Vineyard was one of the first vineyards planted in this appellation. Prior to that, Happy Canyon was pretty much all horse ranches. Uh, and now it's all grapes. But uh, it's, it's, it's quite an interesting vineyard. It's at the mouth of the Happy Canyon, so it, it's not quite as extreme temperatures as, say, the further inland. But it, uh, it tends to produce this wonderful fruit. And like I say, we've been dealing with them now since their inception some 12, 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, so now that Happy Canyon, this vineyard was planted, um, Vogelsang was planted in 97 and 98, so it's got some age on it. Um, and it's really showing in the, in the wines. There's uh, beautiful, beautiful velvety texture. Uh, the tannins, in, Dick, you might want to speak to the tannins. Well, the in, tannins are soft. I mean, it's not like a Napa Cabernet. I mean, it's a different profile down here. We don't... We're a little cooler growing area, so we tend to have a little milder tannin, a little more approachable fruit sooner. Um, you know, th this wine is, in, is, a, is, a, is a 2017, and it's, it's showing beautifully open. It's going to be good for another mm -hmm. 10 years, but it's showing really, really good taste yeah. right now. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting <clears throat> some wonderful um, pencil lead, um, cherry wood. It reminds me of my grandfather's. He smoked pipes and if you, uh, cherry tobacco, um, that cherry wood uh, flavor. It's just really, it's got that in spades. Um, and I should should mention again, I guess there's something about the, the, the number 93. Uh, Jeb Dunnick, Venice, and Tasting Panel all uh, rated this 93, which is some of the highest in Santa Barbara County. Um, like the Pinots, it's not um, fine or filtered, which really I think the wine benefits from. Um, Our philosophy at Foxton is if you don't put it in, you don't have to take it out. Yeah. So we don't have to fine and filter because we're very, very mm -hmm. conscientious about our racking regime. And uh, I mean, we've got experts after 35 years. Yeah, so, you know, it was whole berry destemmed. Uh, it spends 22 months. Um, the Pinots spend 17 months in barrel. The, the, our Bordeaux spend 22 months in barrel. And we use a barrel from the Cognac region um, called Terrensode, which brings um, a nice cedary, subtle cedary notes uh, to the wine. Um, and again, uh, this is the most limited of the wines, and it's a wine generally, it's not with any other distributors, uh, except a small amount in California. Um, so it's a great opportunity to stock up on the Fox and uh, Cabernet. Um, and as I say, there's so little left, it will probably yeah. be gone at the winery uh, very shortly. This is gonna go beautifully with the braised beef cheeks uh, that chef is creating for the dinner with potato and leeks and cream corn. 
Um, we're going to have tonight uh, New, York. Uh, New York, Prime New York uh, barbecue that I'm really looking forward to having with this, with, uh, with Dick's uh, mushroom risotto. Um, so it's a versatile um, Cabernet, um, and I think you're going to really, really enjoy it. And again, the pairings are beautiful. And I should say that, once again, uh, Chris and Mary have great pricing on our wines. Um, and if you order it from them, it's, there's no shipping, which, is, which is, can be rather expensive. So anyway. So anyway, it's been fun, Chris, again. And, and you guys are the best. And we uh, hope, as Jenny said, next year we can all see in person and have a big group hug. Yeah. Anyway, we love you guys. We love you. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you in person. Bye-bye. Hi, we're here in Bien Nacido Vineyard. I'm here with my partner, Bill, who's uh, our winemaker here at Foxen. Has been for 35 years. We're in... Uh, one of the older blocks of the Endecito. And uh, Billy, you wanna sell them? Yeah, on? this is this is one of the blocks that goes into our block UU Chardonnay. This was planted in 1972 on its own roots. So you can see this is one of the original vines from 72 here. Later on, they came in and interplanted uh, like probably about 15, 20 years later. So these vines are a bit younger. And then we also have vines that were planted in the early 90s here, uh, very high density. Back in the day, the vines were planted seven feet apart with 12 foot rows. And you can see now that we're only six feet apart. <laughs> that, was, that was initially, the plantings were that far apart because initially they were doing more mechanized farming, right, Billy? I mean, well, most of the, yeah. Equipment was big, yeah. and you needed a 12-foot row to get the equipment in. Now, with these high densities and all the machinery scaled down. So but also, don't we get a little more comp uh, competition? competition. Yeah. yeah, so a little more stress. Uh, this has been a very cool, cool growing season for us, so we're, we're delayed a little bit here. Uh, we've had an, a, kind of an abnormally cool growing season marine layer every evening uh, breaking up in the mid-morning and so the vines the vines don't work if the sun's not shining and then in the afternoon the wind starts blowing and you get leaf cupping so the leaves aren't at full radiation either so they're not working so a very long long growing season of short work days for these vines uh, we're really looking forward to that this year because of the acidity. When you have a cool, nice, cool growing season, you don't get a lot of acid leaving, transpiring out. So we're gonna have great acidity, which means a long live wine. It's tasting like about 19 bricks right now. So I think we're about three weeks out. Uh, typical, for Bien Nacido, this wine is always uh, a lot of citrus and guava with, with great acidity. How is this uh, vintage looking compared to previous vintages? Uh, it's looking really good. It's, we're going to have longer hang time that we haven't had in a long time uh, because of the cool days. So it's been stretched out. When you get that hang time, uh, the wines are better. All right, and and we're going to be featuring the 2018 Block UU Chardonnay at our dinner at uh, with Chris Gluck. Should be growing and showing beautiful right now. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to add, Bill? No. It's just nice to be over here. Yeah. The vintage overall is, um, what so have we far, brought in? So good. Uh, Pinot Noir and a little bit of a state Chardonnay off the Tinicoac Vineyard. So far. And Pinot Noir off of our Block 8, Yenacido, 
and a little bit of John Sebastiano Pinot Noir. All right. Thanks a lot, Billy. You're we'll welcome. We'll see you soon.